Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So this morning, we heard two absolutely beautiful readings, both of which are familiar to most, if not all, of us. Tricia did a beautiful job touching on the reading from John, uh, John chapter 3, where we hear those words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. That in and of itself is worthy of a message. But this morning, I want to draw our attention to Psalm 121. So I'm going to invite you to turn to page 560 in your pew Bible. And there on the left-hand side, you will find Psalm 121. During this season of Lent, we are walking alongside Jesus as he is journeying to Jerusalem and then to the cross. In fact, these 40 days are often referred to as our Lenten journey. So perhaps it's most fitting that our psalm for today is a blessing for one who's about to leave on a journey. It is often referred to as a prayer or a psalm for travelers or a prayer for sojourners. This language from Psalm 21 appears in our baptismal services, our funeral services. It takes part right in the very first part, the very beginning of the Apostles' Creed. It is a beautiful profession of faith and trust in God and God's love and protection, which is why Psalm 121 is so often recited when people of faith reach for words of comfort and assurance in the midst of the challenges, difficulties, and struggles of life's journey from beginning to end and everything in between. So this morning, I invite you to enter into this psalm by putting yourself in the very shoes of the writer by putting yourself in the writer's place. And so Psalm 121 begins with a genuine cry for help. And it actually sheds a little light on all the anxieties and the powerlessness, those feelings of powerlessness that the writer is facing and feeling. And so the writer asks, where should I look for help? Now, it's important to note that traveling in the ancient world was difficult at best, and it was often dangerous. Lack of water, especially during the sun, heat-packed days of summer, would have been a constant concern. And those hills, those hills could have been a source of great fear and anxiety because of the danger of robbers and bandits that may have been hiding out there. And of course, darkness, right? We all know what darkness can do, especially what our minds can do when we find ourselves in the midst of darkness and the fear and trembling that can set in. Where should I look for help? It's a really good question. It's a really good question whether you are traveling from one geographical point to the next, facing challenges along the way, or if you are traveling in the ups and the downs of life, of this life we live and lead in this world. And though in the big picture, Our life is only temporary here on earth. We all know that. The truth is, the journey on earth at times can be downright challenging, can be difficult when we face all sorts of challenges along the way. 
In other words, life is not always smooth sailing. And I know many of us can attest to that. We know that the waters can be rough when we face illness or depression, anxiety or addiction, uncertainty or doubt, loss and grief, loneliness, sin, war, evil. You get the idea. Life is not always smooth sailing. So in the midst of life and all that is to come, with the good and the bad, I can't think of a more appropriate question to ask than, where should my help come from? Where should I look for help? Now the question is answered in the next verse. It's a beautiful confession of faith. Where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where do you find yourself today in your journey? Where do you find yourself today in your journey of life? What is in your heart? What is on your mind? What are your fears? What are your struggles? What are you wrestling with today? In those moments of uncertainty, those moments of struggle and challenging times along life's journey, I invite you to do what the people from long ago did as well, and that is to name them. To name them. And then to claim these words from Psalm 121 as your own. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So wherever you may be in your travels, in your journey, whether it's geographical or physical or mental or in your relationship with God, know and trust that you are never alone. How do we know this? Because the psalm continues with a beautiful blessing, reassuring you and me that God watches over us. God assumes responsibility for our lives each and every day. So much so that the language of keeping of watching and preserving is used six times in only six verses. Count them, they're there. The language of God keeping and watching and preserving us along the way. And notice, notice who's doing the action here. It's not you, it's not me, it's God. God is the one who is doing the keeping. God is the one who is doing the looking after. And I know that there are times in our lives where we feel as if though we are losing our grip on God, right? But the good news for you and me is that God never loses his grip on us. God promises to watch over us, to watch our going out and our coming in from this time on and forevermore. So in the coming days, whether you are driving from one place to the next, whether you're sitting at home or out for a walk, wherever you may be, I want you to ask yourself this and to think about this question. What does it mean for God to be my keeper. What does it mean for God to be my keeper? What does that look like? How does that feel? Now let me be clear. Psalm 121, this prayer, does not promise that life's journey will be easy. We see that in the very words from the writer. It does not promise that life's journey will be easy, that life will be without illness, without pain and suffering. 
and that doubt and loneliness and grief and sadness and suffering will be absent. But what it does promise to you and me today is that those things will never have the last and final word. To paraphrase the Apostle Paul, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that, that is good news. Now, truth be told, Psalm 121 is personally one of my favorite psalms because it reveals the very essence of who God is. It reveals to us the full promise of God's love and grace and presence in our lives and for God's personal concern and compassion for each and every one of us. And here's the thing, it's that same promise that surrounded Jesus as he journeyed to Jerusalem and to the cross. God was there too. God was keeping his life. And so during our Lenten journey, as we follow Jesus on the way, the good news for you and me this day and in all the days to come is that God is our keeper too. From this time on and forevermore. Let it be so. And let us pray. Gracious God, our beginning and our end, you kept Abraham and Sarah in safety throughout the days of their pilgrimage. You led the children of Israel through the midst of the sea, and by a star you led the Magi to the infant Jesus. Protect and guide us when we journey through this season of Lent and life. Make our ways safe and our homecomings joyful, for you are our keeper, and our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. Amen.